Hi, this is Erling with Travel Trail Sale. Today we're going to be reviewing the Garmin Dashcam 57. Today we're going to be reviewing the Garmin Dashcam 57. And you know at Travel Trail Sale we normally buy all of the gear that we review. In this case I wanted to let you know this dash cam was provided to us by Techno RV. And we're an affiliate of Techno RV. If you should happen to purchase from them using our link, we'll receive a commission. So thank you to Techno RV for sending this dash cam along. We really do appreciate it. In today's review, we're going to do three things. We're going to start by telling you a little bit about why we decided to get a dash cam and why you might want one too. Then I'll do an unboxing and I'll show you everything that comes with a Garmin Dashcam 57. Finally, I'm going to get it installed and take it out on a road test. So we'll take it out and capture some video footage and be able to show you exactly what you'll see if you get a Garmin Dashcam 57. Let's dive in and start with why you might want a Dashcam. Dashcam. Dash cam. So it's a good thing. So it's, it is a good thing. Why have a da dash cam? Why Ju have a dash cam? Judy has joined the video. Judy, <laughs> what, tell us a little bit about what led up to us getting our first dash cam. Sure. So um, I was driving on Interstate 85 mm -hmm. South through Atlanta. And if uh, anyone has driven through Atlanta, you know that it is uh, a lot of traffic and uh, just constant cars. So it was daytime. I mean, it was towards the end of the day, but it was still daytime. And I was in the right hand, all the way to the right hand lane, mm -hmm. going about 60 miles per hour. And um, literally out of the blue, from two lanes over... Um, a, tr a pickup truck cut across two lanes of traffic, cut, cut off the car next to me, and then proceeded to cut me off, and then slammed on his brakes. Oh, wow. And I had no time and no space. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, I hit um, the back of his pickup truck and got caught on his hitch. Wow. So, your car got latched onto the back of a pickup and you're in a traffic lane, so somehow you need to separate and get to the side, and that must have been kind of scary. It was very scary, because it's a very, very busy interstate, a lot of traffic, uh, you know, a lot of semi-trucks. Um, so luckily, nobody was hurt, which is the most important thing, mm -hmm. but... Since, I, it, since it was his story against my, you know, my side of the story, um, I, and I had no evidence to show how he cut me short I was found at fault yeah and it was very unfortunate yeah you know? so uh, a dash cam isn't going to prevent an accident right but at least then uh, if you are in an accident uh, then you have a video to kind of back you up so that exactly. can be a really helpful thing to have the insurance company asked do you have any pictures or video right. and you know, we had pictures of how much damage there was to the car. Unfortunately, you know, the front end of the car got hit and, mm -hmm. and damaged pretty good. But, you know, you were able to, to drive away from the incident and, and make it home. So in this case, you know, it, it turned out okay. Sure. But a dash cam and having that footage would have really helped. And, and mm -hmm. thinking about a wide angle so you can see that person coming across multiple lanes like that. Uh, that's where if you're thinking about the, the features of a dash cam that are important is to have it record an incident and to, to be able to capture the whole width of what's happening. Absolutely. Trudy's story is an interesting one and an important one, but she was in a car and in, you know in normal traffic a car can slam on the brakes and stop pretty quickly. You have a lot of safety features on there but we also drive our RV, which in our case is a large pickup towing a heavy travel trailer. And it can't stop as quickly as a car. 
And I don't always know if people realize mm -hmm. as they're merging on the highway or if they're passing us that they do need to allow a little extra distance because, you know, if we did have to stop short, we need to allow some extra space. So we've had a few other times recently on a trip. Oh, somebody came zooming on <laughs> an on-ramp straight for us and wow, I had to stop as quickly as I can and try and merge over to get out of the way, but a dash cam would just be a nice reassurance that if something did happen, we have some kind of, you know, video of it. Yes, some kind of recording of, of, of the events, and hopefully we'll never have to use that recording. Right. and hopefully or, you'll never have to use it. Exactly. But it's kind of nice to have it if you do need it. Just think of it as an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. So with that, we're going to get into the unboxing and the review. So uh, let's jump right into our review, review of the Garmin Dashcam 57. We chose the Garmin Dashcam 57 for several reasons. First off, it's pretty small, and when we install it, it should fit mostly behind the rear view mirror, so it doesn't interfere with our vision. Second, it has high definition video, a high definition and a high frames per second. And all that really means is that your video should come out pretty clear and pretty smooth. It has a 140 degree viewing angle, so that should capture most of what's going on around us on the road. Although if you think you need a wider viewing angle, Garmin does have one with a 180 degree view. So generally it is small and has good quality video. It's easy to install and I like that it came with two magnetic mounts. And that means I can put one in my daily driver car and one in the truck we use when we're camping and just easily move the dash cam between the two depending on which car I'm driving or which vehicle I'm driving. Now Garmin does have four dash cams in their lineup and if you're not quite sure which is the right one for you you might want to check out the overview that Techno RV provides. They actually went through each of the four dash cams and compared what those features and functions actually mean and that might help you make the selection. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open the box. So there's a tab on the bottom here towards the back. We will just pull that open. There we go. And we've got the uh, actual dash cam itself, which is nice. It's rectangular. It's a little bit smaller than, if you're familiar with the GoPro, it's about half the size of a GoPro. Camera on the front, screen on the back and it does have a series of buttons along the side. Also in the box we have a cigarette lighter style USB power and it looks like there are two cables in the box. Here are the two cables that come with the Garmin 57 dash cam. One seems really long uh, relative to the other, more cable there, and they both are very similar. They have a USB style plug on one side and then the plug that goes into the camera on the other end. You can see they're both 90 degrees and they look pretty much the same, but the difference is the orientation on those. And they're oriented in such a way that one points up while the other points down which gives you some flexibility in terms of your vehicle, how you want to run the cables. Also in the box is a small instruction booklet. Installing the dash cam is really easy. You just stick the magnetic mount to the windshield, attach the dash cam, and then plug it in. It'll automatically start recording as soon as it's plugged in. Let's get the Garmin dash cam out on the road. We took it on the interstate as well as on a two-lane highway 
just so you could get a small sample of the kind of video that you'd expect if you use the Garmin Dashcam 57. So let's hit the road! I really like some of the safety features that Garmin has built into this dash cam. For example, if you're at a traffic light and the vehicles ahead of you start moving, it's going to give you an alert that traffic is moving. And driving down the road, if you start easing out of your lane, it's going to give you a lane departure warning. Finally, if a vehicle is too close ahead of you, it's going to give you a forward collision avoidance warning. Here's an example of each. After using the Garmin dash cam, the question is, would we recommend it? Well, think about these things. It's easy to install. It's easy to move from one vehicle to another, and I really do appreciate that. The video quality seems pretty good, and I really do appreciate the safety features. So based on those criteria, I would have to say we recommend the Garmin Dashcam 57 it seems like a really good product that does its job well. Thanks for joining us on our review of the Garmin Dashcam 57. I hope it was helpful. Do you use a Dashcam? Has it been helpful to you? Leave us a comment and, and share your thoughts. Thanks again for stopping by and we hope to see you real soon.